Wet weather is west. Anybody driving to Chicago, Grand Rapids, maybe up toward Traverse City today. Watch out. It's uh, heavy in spots. It holds off here until maybe 1 p.m., something like that. Just after lunch, we'll start to see that uh, rain moving in. 60s and breezy before that. Again, going to be a wet soaker of an afternoon. All right, that could make your evening commute a little bit tricky, but right now we're talking about the morning commute and that looks great right now. This is I-96 right at Merriman. You can see traffic volumes are light, dry roads and visibility is great. No accidents. Well, some pretty shocking video out of St. Louis, Missouri, where a professor at the city's community college was pulled to the ground and handcuffed at a recent board meeting. Yeah, the video is pretty alarming. 53 year old Steve Taylor, an adjunct math professor, was arrested after he objected to a no clapping rule that was put into place earlier in the meeting. You can see the takedown there. The arrest report stated that Taylor aggressively forced his way toward the board members. Taylor has received a letter stating that he's no longer allowed on the campus. It is 526 and new in our next half hour. We'll get you updated with stories from all across Metro Detroit, including Plymouth and Madison Heights. Plus fears of a serial killer in the community where several people were attacked in the same area. We'll tell you more about that. Also ahead, a local police officer heads to court as the accused on trial for taking advantage of those that he is supposed to serve and protect. They protect live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News today at 5:30 starts now. Officer on trial, new this half hour, the local law enforcement officer now facing sex assault charges. Plus wrong way. Chilling video showing the moment an SUV slams right into this restaurant. And you'll need your umbrella, raincoat starts today and we'll probably need it for a good portion of the week it looks like. Hopefully you got your fill of all the sunshine and mild temperatures over the weekend. Yeah, so absolutely. Looks and, like it's come to an end. And conveniently, I just found my local four umbrella. Remember we needed it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I found it. And the reason I couldn't find it is because it was tucked away with all of the summer stuff, like uh -huh. the hose and the football and all that. All right, because we didn't have a lot of rain around here for yeah. a while, but it does look like it's going to make a return today, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, October has been a way different month and September unusually dry. We have another super soaker Moving into the state, especially the western half of pure Michigan, seeing what could be two to four inches of rain here over the next 36 hours. But here's a look right now at numbers in all four zones, low 60s out your door, 62 in Lapeer. We have 60s through the 8 a.m. hour, but just cloudy skies for commuting to and from work this morning. Unless your work is Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, Traverse City, uh, it will be dry, but through the afternoon, and the rain chances pick up afternoon and evening, especially right now. Again, it is all west of us here. Big Rapids Cadillac seeing some decent showers and we have our little uh, distance mileage 150 miles away here from sort of the core of that. That's just slowly moves in our direction again through the afternoon and evening, which means the evening drive will be a mess around here this morning. It is up to you folks. Drive well, and the roads are in good shape, Kim. Yeah, but be safe a little bit later today as we know that rain comes down and things can get tricky out there. All right, well, here's what's going on this morning for your morning drive over on eastbound I-96. This is the ramp to southbound I-75. We have some trees here, but you can see past that some flashing lights. Well, that's an accident blocking the shoulder. As you can see here, cars still able to get by. There's not delays or backups, but just something to be cautious of while tra traveling through that area. And then we also want to take a look right now uh, let you know about some more things uh, going on over in Macomb County. MDOT is set to host a public meeting to explain its I-696 project in Macomb County. The open house style public meeting will take place tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. at Warren City Hall. Early information will be shared on the project that is being designed to replace the concrete on I-696 between I-75 and I-94. It's set to begin in the spring and will be completed in late 2018. Over to you. Good information, Kim. Thank you. It is 532 and a Dearborn officer, a police officer heading to court this morning to face sex assault charges. Yes, this all allegedly happened during a traffic stop. Local 4's Nick Monticelli joins us now live and Nick, this uh, has a lot of layers to it because these two were familiar with each other. In fact, the uh, officer says that the two were friends and he's blindsided by these charges. By the way, these are not new charges. This case has been going on for over a year. In fact, the incident that allegedly happened was in May 
of last year, but when you look at the case log, you can see it's been bouncing back and forth and dismissed. It was scheduled for a jury trial and then another jury trial that was dismissed. And now there's going to be a bench trial here at the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice where the judge will hear the arguments and determine guilt. Let's back up a little bit and remind you of what this case is all about. Again, it's Dearborn Corporal Justin Smith who's accused of sexually assaulting a woman while she was pulled over for a traffic stop. He has been suspended without pay and there is dash cam video of this incident. As you can see, there isn't much to see though. The officer does reach into the car, but he says he just touched her shoulder in court. The victim disagrees, saying she never saw it coming. Um, it was an awkward silence and he just turned in to the car, reached in, touched my boob, and then went on about its business. All right, now there is, of course, the other side of this story, though. Corporal Smith says that he and the victim were friends. In fact, they maintained their friendship after this incident. He says that she would hug him and kiss him while he saw her at a diner that she works at. He thinks there's a different motive in play here. He says that she is dating another Dearborn police officer, and the two of them don't get along, Smith and this other officer. He thinks all of that has to play in as well. Again, this is set for a bench trial, which means there is no jury. The judge will hear the arguments, and he will have to make the decision in this case. We are live here at the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Just hope that you can actually get to the bottom of this and find out what the truth really is in this matter. Absolutely. You know? All right, Nick, thank you. It is 534 and new this morning, the man charged in a high speed chase that ended with a dramatic tackle in Detroit has pled guilty on all charges, including fleeing and resisting arrest. Police say that they were chasing 22 year old Duran Deshaun Sherrard because they suspected that he was involved in a deadly shooting. So far, no charges have been filed related to that crime. Sherrard is set to be sentenced on November 3rd. A man is hit and left to die in the middle of the road in Pontiac. This happened late Saturday night near the intersection of University Drive and Melrose Street. The 29 year old man was simply crossing the street when he got hit by a full size extended cab Chevrolet pickup truck. The truck is possibly tan or silver in color and reported to have a passenger side taillight out. If you have any information about this crime, please call Crime Stoppers at 1 800 speak up. Police in the city of Davison, uh, just west of Flint, are investigating after a three year old boy fell off of a seat of bleachers at a middle school football game. Investigators were called Saturday to the field located at Davison Middle School. That boy is now listed in critical condition and police are working to determine exactly how he was uh, able to fall off of those bleachers in the first place. The body of a child is discovered not far from the home of a missing three year old in Texas. The body was found late Sunday morning. The child has not been identified. Sharon Matthews disappeared on October 7th when her adoptive father told police that he put the little girl outside as punishment for not drinking her milk. Police don't have much to say about the discovery of the body. No one has been arrested yet. We are still trying to make a positive identification on the body. So far, her father has been charged with child endangerment. It is 536 and turning to decision 2017 now. Today, Henry Ford College, along with several community groups, are set to host a voting rights town hall. Yes, the event will take place from 6 until 8 this evening at the Ford Audito uh, Forfa Auditorium, which is located on the first floor of the Mazara Conference Center on the campus. This is located right there on Evergreen Road. According to the group, this event will educate the community about political issues and voters can ask questions about voting rights and protections. Meanwhile, we're just two days away from the only mayoral debate between Mike Duggan and Coleman Young II. Our very own Devin Skillian will be moderating the debate. It'll happen right here in our local four studios. And if you have questions that you would like answered for either candidate, you can submit those questions to our website at clickondetroit.com. The debate will air live right here on Local 4 on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Looking forward to it. Yes, me too. Time now is 537, and there is a chilling story that's developing out of Florida where a community fears a serial killer is at work. This morning, at least three cases may be linked. And ahead in the carport at 6 a.m., same script, different players. Another big-time director from Hollywood is accused of sexual harassment by dozens of women. And in good health this morning, the benefits of medical marijuana for children. 
We'll have more on that after the break. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 541 and an alleged plot to blow up a shopping mall in Miami has been foiled by federal agents. This was done during an undercover operation last Friday. Officials saying that they arrested Vincente Solano, who is said to be an ISIS supporter. The FBI was tipped off about the plot from an informant who was communicating with him. Now, while Solano is said to have made pro ISIS videos, he's not believed to have a direct connection to them or any other terror group. Now to Louisiana, where flames ripped through a home early Sunday, sadly killing the two youngest of four children inside. Officials say the fire started in Gretna at a home where a grandmother was able to get her two older children out to safety. The investigators say that the woman told them that she was not able to reach the two eight year olds who neighbors say were also blind. The fire marshal believes this might have been an electrical fire that started in the kitchen, but sadly those two blind children did lose their lives. Well, days after the NFL declined to change its rule on the national anthem, about two dozen players protested around the league on Sunday. This weekend, 22 players were seen protesting during the pregame anthems. On September 25th, just days after President Trump said players should be fired for protesting during the anthem, more than 200 players protested. The majority of Sunday's protesting players came from the Seattle Seahawks or the San Francisco 49ers. Turning our attention to good health this morning, there is some new evidence about the benefits of medical marijuana for children. There was a review of research that suggested marijuana might help reduce nausea and vomiting caused by chemotherapy in children. The drug may also help decrease seizures in children with epilepsy. There was not enough proof to support the use of marijuana for pain, PTSD, or Tourette syndrome in children. So there are new reports that indicate a lot of people tend to overestimate how much pain they're going to be in and how much pain they'll feel after surgery. Yes, a new study of more than 200 surgical patients found they expected almost twice the level of pain than they actually felt. Those who had nerve blocks, epidurals, or other regional anesthesia were most likely to overestimate their pain. Experts say this anticipation can cause unnecessary anxiety. Well, perhaps you saw something like this over the weekend. Oh, a gorgeous beautiful. looking sunset picture from Lake Angeles. Anna Laurie sending us this great looking picture. And uh, this is, uh, again, just a beautiful shot at what a lot of folks enjoyed over the weekend, enjoying a little extension of summer. Maybe you're out on the lakes one last time. I think that is probably the, the safe call on the end of boating season. But hey, if we got through the 20 something of October and still able to get out there on the lake. So local four storm pins, a free app for you. I'd love to see some pictures tomorrow, maybe of your rain gauges after the rain coming in tonight or this afternoon. 62 degrees right now, overcast skies. Southeast winds are seven. Those southeast winds will be picking up through the afternoon hours as the rain starts to approach wet and windy second half of the day. Those southeast winds 10 to 20 and temperatures probably peaking around lunchtime at 68 degrees. But then the rain comes in by 1, 2 o'clock and gets heavy through times in the afternoon and evening, making for a slow evening drive and uh, likely shutting off at times late evening and overnight, but more spotty showers also as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. You see the heaviest showers right now over Lake Michigan, but hitting parts of western lower as we widen things out. We just wait for this area of low pressure out of uh, southern Illinois and Indiana to pivot toward the northeast. And as it does, it brings a lot more moisture up with it. Watch the computer model here as we get through again in uh, lunchtime dry and then our west zone maybe a little before lunch, maybe Lenaway County as well. But most of us, it's going to be one, two o'clock uh, through the afternoon and early evening by eight, nine o'clock, a quick little window here, a dry slot, but we have more showers that are pivoting around this area of low pressure again tomorrow. Looks like western lower will see the lion's share of the rain, especially early on, but we'll get some showers. It will be breezy and cool. 50s Tuesday, 40s on Wednesday. The numbers keep going down. Can't rule out a little sleep. Maybe a couple of ice pellets mixed in here early tomorrow or early 
Wednesday. Uh, Thursday and Friday do look dry. The uh, game in Ann Arbor on Saturday is going to be one of those bundle up uh, games. And uh, Sunday night, the Lions and Steelers going at it. Kim, will you be there? Yes. I'm going to the game. I'm really excited. It's going to be a late one. Are you though. coming to work next month? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to nap all day, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Good morning, everyone. Well, we've got a few problems to let you know about over on our roads this morning for your morning commute. Conditions are good, but we do have an accident over on eastbound I-94 just past Telegraph here. The left shoulder is blocked, so just be careful of that. Now, even though this is eastbound I-94, we are seeing some delays over on westbound I-94. Could be due to gawkers or something like that, so just keep that in mind while traveling westbound I-94. And then we still have this problem to let you know about on this ramp eastbound I-96 to southbound I-275. An accident blocking the shoulder there. A little slower than normal in that area, but not any major backups to worry about. Just something to keep in mind as you head out the door this morning. Rhonda. Kim, thank you. Take a look at this as these people are walking down the sidewalk. What happens next? Some pretty stunning video as this SUV slams right into a Chicago restaurant. Nine people were hurt, three critically. Police are telling us the driver of the SUV accidentally hit the reverse pedal, cutting across traffic and plowing backwards right into the restaurant. The daughter of the owner of that restaurant describes the chaotic scene after four children were hurt in the crash. Everybody crying, the little kids with blood. We were trying to calm them down, helping them out. The SUV driver and a passenger were also hurt. No word yet on the exact conditions of those injured. Pretty scary stuff. That yeah, is. It is 548, everybody. Let's get into some stories that you might have missed, starting with this one. Uh, a thousand, about a thousand cyclists made their way across the border on Sunday for the Tour Detroit Bike the Bridge event. Yeah, they biked right on over the Ambassador Bridge. The organizers of the event say that it's a huge undertaking to get the approval from the bridge company to actually close the bridge to traffic for everyone to bike over and back in one hour. That's coupled with the fact that the tunnels closed for construction. This is the one day of the year cyclists can ride across the Ambassador Bridge. And they all say they underestimated just the steep level oh, yeah. of that incline. Yeah, I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah, both coming and going. I'm sure it was very cool, though, to experience you that. Bet. Even if it was for just an hour. Maybe even a little bit scary. You a know, little to, bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, down to Texas now, where a benefit concert was held for Hurricane Harvey victims. And it drew five very special guests, all Five living former U.S. presidents took the stage to encourage relief donations. Pretty incredible. The musical lineup incredible as well. The One America Appeal concert featured several Grammy Award winners with a special surprise from Lady Gaga. The appeal has raised $31 million since it began on September 7th for hurricane relief. So. That was cool to see all of them in the same place. Yeah, I have a friend that was actually there and I was just like, wow, what an experience remarkable. that is. Remarkable. Yeah. Uh, speaking of presidents, President Trump is going to allow some classified JFK files to be open. Yes, he is. Back in 1992, Congress ordered that secret Kennedy investigation files be revealed within 25 years after the Oliver Stone movie JFK turned up public pressure around conspiracy theories. The documents are expected to be released by Thursday unless a formal objection is filed by the White House. Very interesting. All right. It is 550 right now and uh, some pretty cool stuff happened in the city of Madison Heights. Sure was. It's getting a head start on Halloween with a special event held for children with special needs on Sunday. Yeah, several local foundations were invited to join in on the party, which included a buffet lunch and a little bit of trick or treating at the Madison Heights Venetian Banquet Center. All the proceeds from the event are going towards supporting the Ted Lindsay Foundation. All right, and in downtown Detroit, kids were out in the streets in their Halloween costumes. There we saw Captain America, uh, what looks like a princess, and they were all celebrating the seventh annual Pumpkin Palooza. Yeah, there were costume contests, a petting zoo, other activities at the event, including the Howl Ween pet <laughs> costume contest, awarding prizes to the top three costumed cats and dogs. But how cool is that? Did you see the kids? They were doing adorable. Um, they were doing the Michael Jackson Thriller dance. <laughs> you know, the whole. Yeah. What's also <laughs> cool is just, I mean, nobody anticipated the weather would be this amazing. Except for, for Brandon. He's like, yep, I told you so. Yeah, so it's a very <laughs> nice day for all the outdoors. He's smiling activities. over there like a proud auntie. <laughs> 
Fifty at the barbecue. <laughs> it's five fifty-one, everybody, and a Cub Scout accused of crossing the line. After the break, the boy booted from his troop because he asked a question. Yeah, we'll let you decide if he was being too tough on a politician when we come back. On the next Live in the D, why your next holiday party should not be at your house. Plus, forget the mascara. You gotta see this. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Tonight. Good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome back to Local 4 News today as we look on wet weather west. It is holding off for the first, well, almost first half of the day. I think by about one o'clock in the afternoon, rain showers moving into most of Metro Detroit, but cloudy skies now 62, a little breezy in the afternoon, and I think between 1 and 8 p.m., some good soaking showers slowing down the late commute. Kim? All right, well, here's what's slowing down the early commute. We have an accident over on westbound I-94 just past Telegraph blocking the left shoulder. Now, originally this came in as eastbound I-94, but I did want to update you to let you know it's the westbound lanes that we're seeing delays at. All right, Kim, thank you. The search is on for a possible serial killer in Tampa, Florida, and a neighborhood there after a series of murders over a span of 10 days. Three people were killed within blocks of each other while walking alone. Benjamin Mitchell was gunned down while walking to a bus stop. Two days later, Monica Hoffa was shot and killed in a vacant lot. And then 10 days after that, the first murder Anthony Neboya, he was killed after getting off of the wrong bus stop. Police say that they believe that the crimes are linked, but are not narrowing the search down to one suspect just yet. They don't want people to focus in on one person. We don't know if it's more than one person, a team of people. There's no rhyme or reason, so we all feel a little shaken and concerned that, you know, we could be the next victim. Police have released this surveillance footage. It's a footage there of an individual that they are calling a person of interest. An 11 year old Cub Scout was given the assignment to research and ask a question during a PAC meeting with Colorado State Senator Vicki Marble. But he says that his question got him kicked out of his den. Ames Mayfield expressed concern over gun control and questioned Marble's support of a bill allowing domestic violence offenders to own guns. Then the pack leader said that he thought my son, his questioning was disrespectful. Given that the Las Vegas shooting happened, I felt that it should be a reasonable thing to ask. Not to mention he lives in Colorado, where we all know that the movie theater shooting happened as well. Ames' troop leaders didn't agree with his questioning, but he did manage to get support from former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, uh, as we know what happened uh, there in uh, their city with the gun situation there. That's a pretty incredible punishment. Yeah, and on top of that, sometimes as journalists, you have to ask tough questions. Absolutely. Well, you know? perhaps that's what he aspires to do. I have a future. <laughs> Definitely right a big now. lesson he just learned there. 557 is your time, and coming up, I'll know at 6 o'clock, local stories from Detroit, also Waterford and Romulus. Plus, experts are revealing uh, warnings for parents about what you should not let your kids do and touch at the doctor's office. Plus, tech giants looking to deflect pressure from Congress with money. Why the links, uh, likes they should say, of Google and Facebook are throwing millions of dollars at lawmakers and their campaigns. See why. This year, live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Deadline day for Flint, the city being forced to make a decision on where it will get its water. It files a last ditch effort though for more time to make that decision. Plus Meyer shoppers, you might want to be where the grocery chain is recalling potentially dangerous vegetables. And beware of the rain and dropping temperatures. Lots going to change this week in terms of all the summer like weather we've been enjoying around here. Big wall of water off to the west of us. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Eventually it's going to get here, but not just yet. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Monday. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Rhonda Walker. And I'm a broadcast. We're coming off of a beautiful weekend. That's oh, all I want to so relish in right now. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It rain, made it a little brain. It will hurt us. It made Monday coming like really difficult because it's like Sunday night, Brandon, and you're soaking up the sun and you're like, man. Yeah, all coming to an end. Out on the patio. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, all three nights. It was great and just happy to be back here with you all. 
um, on this cruddy day. No, I am absolutely. It is uh, much needed rain for the grass and for the reservoirs. These October rains trying to get the deluges in before Halloween. Temperatures in the four zones in the upper 50s and low 60s. 59 Ann Arbor, 64 in Troy right now. Should be right around 60 at the bus stops this morning. Just cloudy, overcast skies, mild temps. 60s this afternoon, but the wet weather between 1 and 8 p.m. Also a little breezy today with a little frontal system coming through. You see the showers right now well off to the west. If you're driving toward Grand Rapids, toward Chicago, even south today, you're going to run into some heavier walls of weather. But uh, this, again, is mainly an afternoon evening deal with some soaking showers, and it'll be a slow drive home, but everything early on may be cloudy, but it's dry. Let's check with Kim. Even though we've got dry weather, we've had some issues. Yes, we do have some issues out there, but later today that is going to be the really tricky commute. This is just a couple of problems to watch out for, like this one over on westbound I-94, just past Telegraph here, an accident blocking your left shoulder. And as you can see by our maps here, we do have a little bit of orange and yellow, meaning that it's a little slow in that area. So you may want to give yourself an extra five minutes as you head out the door this morning. And we have another accident on a ramp. This is eastbound I-96 to southbound I-275. Flashing lights behind this tree here. That is where that accident is. It's blocking the shoulder. Car's still able to get by a little bit slower than normal as traffic volumes start to build. So keep that in mind for your commute as well. I'll keep a close eye on both of those accidents and bring you an update on them in my next report coming up at 614. Back to you. Hopefully they'll clear by then. Kim, thank you. It is 602 now. And the city of Flint is asking for a delay, but the clock is ticking. Yeah, it I'm certainly is. Out. Well, the city of Flint is supposed to decide today where it's going to get its water from, from the for the foreseeable future. Local first in Monticelli joining us live now this morning. And Nick, there really is this last ditch effort to buy more time. Well, it's, I, here's a question I have, Rod. Is the clock still really ticking? So a federal judge last week was essentially fed up with the city council in Flint for not making a decision. He put a deadline in place. That deadline is today, but the city filed a new lawsuit yesterday saying either dismiss this or give us more time. Up until yesterday, it was very clear that the city of Flint needed to make a decision on where its water is going to come from moving forward. But these court documents filed yesterday could change everything. Let's back up. The mass poisoning now seems to be under control, and Flint Mayor Karen Weaver has negotiated a 30-year lease with the new Great Lakes Water Authority. That's where the city's water supply could come from. But the Flint City Council is not liking her choice and will not make a decision. That prompted the State Department of Environmental Quality to sue Flint City Council, which ultimately led to a federal judge ruling on Tuesday that the council must make a decision by off. today. That's where this new lawsuit comes in, claiming the city would be forced under duress to decide on a long-term contract. Federal Judge David Lawson is now being asked to either dismiss the lawsuit or give the council extra time so they can hire an expert to analyze three water supply options. That expert said it will take 75 days. And the federal judge David Lawson was pretty adamant the first time around that he was not happy with how the city was managing things. And that's why he put this deadline in place. So now we're going to have to wait and see. Evan and Rhonda, though, it is kind of interesting. It does raise the question why the city council waited until this point to try to hire this expert, considering they've been working on this for months. It's a very important question yeah. and also in terms of making a decision on whether that deadline will be today or they'll get an extension. When will we find that out? Uh, we should find that out sometime today. Uh, either way, the judge is going to have to look at this case and or the new lawsuit and throw it away and say, no, that doesn't apply or give them more time. But whether what he does, we should know today. It's just we're, we're not sure how long he's going to give them, if at all. Mm. All righty. Nick Monticelli reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Nick. It is 604 and a man and woman caught in the crossfire just innocently enjoying downtown hit by bullets over the weekend. Police say that a fight broke out early Sunday near Bobian and Congress streets in downtown Detroit. The 42 year old man was shot in the stomach. A 48 year old woman suffered graze wounds. Both victims were innocent bystanders and have been released from the hospital. Investigators are now looking at all the surveillance video from businesses in that area to help find the gunman. 
Today, a sentencing hearing for Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is set to start. Last week, Bergdahl pleaded guilty, guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. The second charge carrying a potential life sentence. He walked away from his post in Afghanistan in 2009, saying that he did it to expose problems and was captured by the Taliban. Bergdahl spent nearly five years in capti captivity, uh, captive before returning to the U.S. through a prisoner exchange in 2014. Now let's get to this Help Me Hank recall alert as Myers recalling as packaged vegetables in six states because they could be possibly contaminated with Listeria. Michigan is among the six states on that list. The recall affects 35 Meyer brand products packaged in plastic or foam containers. The items are sold between September 27th and October 20th. And Meyer says no illnesses have been reported, but if you have bought any of the impacted products, you should either throw them away or return them to your local Meyer store. We have everything you need to know on clickondetroit.com. There you'll find the list, the completed list of all the recalled items. Time now is 606 and Governor Rick Snyder and Ontario's premier Kathleen Wynne toured downtown Detroit and they made one of their stops at the Shinola store on Sunday. While there, we had the opportunity to ask Governor Snyder about the possibility of Amazon bringing its new headquarters to Detroit. Well, it'd be incredible and that's why we're really proud to have the international proposal go in uh, with Windsor and Detroit doing it together because it sends a powerful message and I think I don't know if any place else that could really do one at that scale. And Wynn said that the Amazon bid exemplifies her commitment to working with Governor Snyder to benefit both Windsor and Detroit. It is 6.07 and ahead. The secret is finally out. We're going to tell you where you can find Justin Timberlake in concert, so to speak, on February 4th. Yes, and everybody can A free watch. Concert. But first, investing mistakes. Business expert Rod Maloney goes over what you may be doing wrong if you're looking to make money investing. That's for our Money Monday coming up next. Let the debate. Good Monday morning. The market's going crazy. We're seeing it go up and up and up. And you're saying to yourself, well, why can't I get in on this bonanza? And a lot of people are making investing mistakes. And there are a couple of things that happen here. It's all psychological. The first one is being overconfident, saying, oh, I know about this. I can do this. Or the flip side of that, which is being underconfident and you're frozen. You don't want to move. That's one of the problems. Another one is fearing regret. You're fearing that, well, okay, if I sell the stock, then it goes up or down. And then you're going to regret that. Then there's stubbornness. You're too stubborn to move one way or the other. Sell, buy, you're not sure because, well, you're fearing regret. You're too busy to learn. That's a big one. There's always time to go out and learn a little bit more about investing and how to take care of your retirement. Get ready for it. Also, there are a lot of people too worried to risk take, but that's the whole point behind investing. You're taking risk. And so you have to take some. It's just deciding how you're going to do it. You need to do some goal setting in that regard. But in the end, what this all means is you need a financial advisor. I would suggest starting with a certified financial planner. For more on this and other money tips, go to my website, Maloney Money, and click on Detroit.com. Hey, Welcome back, everybody. It is official. Justin Timberlake will perform the halftime show at Super Bowl 52 in Minneapolis next year on February 4th. Yeah, Justin, or JT Lake, as former NSYNC fans called him, <laughs> made the announcement with a little help from Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon. Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? I was going to ask you, sir, if you have the time. I do have the time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You're doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl? You do have time! I do have time! I'm okay. Oh, I love those two together. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good show. He had hits from way back in the day. You might remember. Well, his last performance at the Super Bowl was 13 years ago. <laughs> Nobody can forget that alongside Janet Jackson in what has become the most infamous wardrobe malfunction or might be wardrobe intentional, depending on who you ask. But of course, you can watch the Super Bowl 52 right here on Local 4 in February. February I guess 4th. he's been punished long enough. Right. It's his third appearance, though. I wonder what they Janet like thinks about this, you know? <laughs> Speaking of the Super Bowl, when it comes to making it to the big game in your fantasy football 
League. Jason Carr has you covered as our Monday morning quarterback. How'd you do this weekend, Jason? Why didn't you ask me that last week when I scored 150 plus? No, I up, up against Brandon, I laid an egg, but we'll get to that in a minute. This is the point in the season that can make or break your playoff hopes. So here's who you should not have started in your fantasy league on Sunday. First, Green Bay Packers wide receivers with Aaron Rodgers out. Don't expect them to have good games. Roll the video. On Sunday, the team had a total of, get this, 87 receiving yards under backup QB Brett Hundley. Yuck. But don't fear Aaron Rodgers may be back in as little as six weeks, but do fear if your season ends sooner than that. Another Sunday bust, the Carolina Panthers offense. The Chicago Bears roll it. Cam Newton and friends. The Bears held them to just three points, scoring two touchdowns off of turnovers. Chicago, by the way, would have been a good defensive start. A uh, surprise from Miami Sunday, Dolphins wide receiver Kenny Stills. If he was on your bench, bad call on your part. He torched the Jets defense for two touchdowns, 85 yards and six receptions, which included a wild and lucky catch right there, bouncing around, eventually hauling it in. Now, nope. ruled a catch. And here was another surprise to see on the field. Arizona quarterback and former Michigan State Spartan Drew Stanton dressed in a Supergirl costume during warm-ups. Apparently, he lost a bet. Now, his day got even more eventful when <laughs> starter Carson Palmer broke his arm, making Stanton, your Michigan State Spartan, the likely starter for the rest of the season. Now on to this matter of Brandon versus Brandon's team five and one mine four and two should have been five and one I had a tie and I lost on a tiebreaker and I laid an egg so yeah kudos to your team well thank you it was not <laughs> I, I, ne neither one of us had a, a great week but uh, I had the former Buckeye Zeke Elliott who was pr pretty much the difference maker yeah. Yeah, well, it's good for you. You always need one, one guy to stand out. And uh, we had a matchup early on where it was uh, Adrian Peterson against Todd Gurley. And uh, Jason got the better of me in that match. So you just got to wait. Got to have faith. I have no faith. All right, here's a look at temperatures out there with upper 50s and low 60s. A lot of cloud cover, not a lot of movement in our numbers, though, through uh, the day today. 62 at Metro, 62 in Howell, 60 in Mount Clemens, 63 Port Huron, 63 Harrow, Ontario, Monroe as well, and Ann Arbor at 59. At the bus stop this morning, the sun doesn't come up until 756, and we're going to be right around 60 degrees, cloudy skies, but dry. Dot, dot, dot for now. We're looking good through the lunch hour and then by about 1 or 2 p.m. the rain showers start moving in. So that means we should hit our high temperature right around lunch 68 falling temperatures with the wet weather low and middle 60s. Be prepared for an afternoon and evening soaker that will certainly slow down that evening drive and if any uh, plans outside tonight include practices or anything like that uh, might want to rethink that right now. It is well west of us and this is going to be a problem over the next 36 hours or so. Some areas three to five inches of rain in western lower, but it takes a while to pivot in here. We could get some areas with more than an inch of rain, especially west zone today, uh, but it will be a bit of a soaker and we'll just keep watching those showers throughout the morning here as they inch closer and closer. But uh, by one, two o'clock coming down pretty good, coming down in buckets in some spots, a few dry slots through the late evening and over overnight, but we'll have more waves of wet weather coming in. And I expect tomorrow the heaviest of the wet weather will again be just west of us, but still a few showers in 50s with breezes both today, tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, we keep some showers around lake enhanced showers Wednesday, dry it out Thursday and Friday, but some cool showers around again this coming weekend. So we'll need to prepare for that as we uh, get ready for a home game at the big house.
House and at Ford Field. This is our Josh Strand, your 1-800 Hanson's weather window and a good looking shot here of Corktown and uh, some pumpkin lights. Now, I don't know what those are, but I imagine a lot of people have cool festive lights going up and a fun time of year after a great weekend. You got all the fall and Halloween decorations out. We are ready to go, Kim. Yes. We are ready to go and your morning commute actually looks a lot better than what we're anticipating your evening commute to look like with all of that rain. We just have one problem right now that could slow you down a bit. If you do take westbound I-94 just past Telegraph here, that's where that accident is and it has the left lane block. So those backups are starting to build. We do have red on our maps here, so it shows that that area is pretty slow. So give yourself about an extra 10 minutes if you are traveling this way on I-94 this morning. Speaking of I-94, we're going to see some construction there as well on the eastbound side. Uh, the ramp to northbound Southfield Freeway, only one lane open there from 9 to 4 today. This is a daily project happening all week, wrapping up on Friday at 4 p.m. And then we've got a project happening overnight on east and westbound I-94 between Rotunda and Greenfield. Only one lane open there. This starts at 8 p.m., wrapping up at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you could see a slowdown there if you travel overnight. I'll keep a close eye on that accident over on I-94 and bring you an update on it coming up in my next report at 624. But right now, I'll send it to Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 618 and in today's consumer headlines, Target is offering some holiday shopping incentives. Plus, apparently the less money you have in the bank, the more you're going to be paying in bank fees. There's an alarming new study making some comparisons. Also, Google, Facebook, all sending a lot of money lawmakers way. But why? Aaron A joins us now live from NASDAQ to explain. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Rhonda. Google and Facebook have spent millions of dollars lobbying lawmakers last quarter. Google doled out more than $4 million, Facebook almost $3 million in their effort to influence Congress. Twitter spent over $100,000, and this is all according to figures required by the Lobbying Disclosure Act. The spending comes as Congress turns up the pressure on social media companies over Russia's alleged meddling in the U.S. presidential election. Other tech heavyweights also spent big last quarter. Amazon paid $3.4 million for lobbying. A new study suggests America's lowest income families are paying the highest banking fees. Americans with an annual household income under $30,000 and a checking account pay an average of $31 per month in bank or credit union fees. That's more than three times as much as other typical income brackets pay. That's $9 for people in various other income brackets. This is according to a survey from Bankrate.com and Money. Target is gearing up for the holidays by offering free shipping. The retailer said that the free service will start next month. Target also said that there will be plenty of items priced at under $15, with some as low as a single dollar. The holiday promotions come as Target gets ready to battle it out with Amazon and Walmart for holiday sales. Rhonda, back to you. All right, Aaron, thank you. It is 620 on your Monday morning and still ahead, caught on video. Caught in a tornado, in fact. Dramatic video from a driver waiting out the storm in their truck. Plus, a warning for parents the next time you take your child to the doctor's office. And time now for our Facebook friend for today. Take a look. This is Tammy Wilson Sledge from Sterling Heights. She's been married to her husband, John, for 22 years. She's also a mom of four and a grandma of three. Well, look at that. And we're going to mail you a gift card from Happy's Pizza just for being our friend for today. And if you at home would like to be our Facebook friend, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page, click on the Friend of the Day tab, and just like Tammy, make sure you send us a photo and tell us a little bit about yourself for your chance to win big. We're back in a minute. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is time for Good Health at 624, and it's a warning for for parents, a doctor's office waiting room could be a big germ infested spot. The American Academy of Pediatrics advises mandatory flu shots for all office staff, especially during this time of year during cough and cold and sniffle season. The group also recommends waiting rooms be stocked with alcohol based sanitizers and masks, along with signs about cold, cough and sneeze etiquette. Uh, but doctors should not put out teddy bears and other plush toys because they absorb, absorb germs and they're very difficult to clean. Parents are also urged to bring their own toys to entertain their kids while they're waiting there in the waiting room. 
Well, good Monday morning and let's take a look at the forecast. The big story today is wet weather. They're soaking rain showers, but we have to be patient here and I think we're all right with that. You can see clouds over uh, Metro Detroit southeastern lower. It's wet to the west and those showers start to pivot in here after lunch between one and uh, about 8 p.m. We'll have some soaking showers and that'll slow down the evening drive, Kim. Yeah, Brandon, and this is slowing down the morning drive. This accident over on westbound I-94 just past Telegraph here. The left lane is blocked. We're starting to see some delays in this area. It looks pretty slow, so if you do travel this way, give yourself a little bit of extra time. All right, hockey fans, Red Wings fans, sorry in advance because we have to talk about last night's action. Probably the Wings' weakest showing this season at home. Things really fell apart in the second period. In just 15 minutes of play, the Vancouver Canucks fire off 18 shots, three goals, and it was tied before that happened. So the Wings go on to lose four to one to the Canuck. And the Wings have now lost four games in a row. The same venue, different sport, the Detroit Pistons will host the Philadelphia 76ers tonight. An interesting up and coming young team, but a team certainly we should be able to uh, compete with pretty well. 76ers come in uh, on a three game losing streak, guys. Boy, oh boy. All right. Pistons. Yeah, absolutely. 626 is your time now. And coming up next to 630, local stories for you from Dearborn, Pontiac, and Detroit. Plus, a massive bus at Detroit's Metro Airport. We'll show you what a couple was caught trying to smuggle in. But first, the Halloween display that will probably, actually, I should say, definitely put all of ours to shame. That's next in today's top video. Look at this. Opera Welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's top video. One Colorado couple goes all out with their Halloween display. They're in the Halloween spirit. More than 200 pumpkins fill in their front yard. And the pumpkins don't just light up. They display in sync with Halloween music. The homeowners say that they expect almost 1,000 people will drop by and see their display. And they expect that people to come throughout the weekend leading up to Halloween. Pretty uh, impressive. It is very impressive, but I hope they put the same effort in for Christmas. I'm sure they probably would. <laughs> We're back in a minute. Quick turnaround, though. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. On the wrong side of the law, a local police officer will face a judge today accused of sexually assaulting a woman during a traffic stop. Plus, a major new development in this wild chase through the city of Detroit. What the man seen jumping on this van after trying to flee from police all over downtown has just done. We'll have that coming up. Plus, Brandon's at the Telestrator. A pretty big arm of wet weather down to the south, and you can see the elbow right here in the Chicagoland area. As we track the rain showers, we also say goodbye to summer. Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I was like, where, where is he going with this? I know. Well, I was wondering, like, when he put the hand, you know, I'm like the mitten, the, you know. Yeah. Obviously, we use that to describe our state. I thought that was going to be a tie-in. But you're right, Brandon. We are saying goodbye to one gorgeous weekend. <laughs> So that was interesting. Right. <laughs> Backhanded compliments. Thank you very much. It, it was good. Had an opportunity there with the mitten and the glove and that was a lot. Some pretty poor artwork, but uh, yeah, good, good effort. Got the point across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't see any of that coming. I just wanted to say bye, summer. <laughs> We've got a change coming your way today. Thanks for playing along. 62 degrees. Very mild temperatures to start under cloudy skies. Southeast winds are nine. The winds are going to kick up later into the afternoon. That's also when we expect our wet weather. 60 ish at the bus stop. Our sunrise time at about 756 AM. Cloudy skies, but dry as we get you through the day. Uh, again, we hold off the rain through the lunch hour. 68 degrees will likely be our high temperature and then through the two, three o'clock hours, the rain starting to really pick up. Temperatures will drop into the low and middle 60s. But right now, the showers from Detroit all the way to Kalamazoo, about 150 miles away. 
so we still have some time. It is going to be flooding rains in some spots, potentially across western lower Michigan throughout the day. You can see the arm aforementioned is just pouring into western lower at least at first, but this area of low pressure will be swinging in here, so do expect some soakers through the afternoon and evening today. All, All right. right, we've been warned. You know what afternoon showers are great for? Napping. Made yeah. flowers. <laughs> in Kim's world, you and can I nap know in the afternoon. You scheduled a nap for today. <laughs> because I have an evening event today. So, She's so we crazy. call it free sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Like a disco nap? <laughs> free, sleep. free sleep. Yes, but, but you know what? Showers are not good for your evening commute. You don't That's need be showers tricky. either, though, to take a nap. <laughs> no, this is true. I can nap in whatever. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at our maps right now to see what's going on. Luckily, we don't have those showers to deal with right now, but we do have one accident that could definitely slow you down if you're headed out this way. It's on westbound I-94, just past Telegraph here. It's on the left shoulder now. It was blocking a lane before, but they've moved it over to the shoulder, so the delays are getting a little bit better looking at our maps here. We're just in that orange area, so you still want to give yourself a little bit of extra time, but not crazy um, in that area. So just keep that in mind for your commute. Now, I do want to show you what the roads look like this morning as you head out the door. So we have our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. Taking a look at this. This is I-75 right at the Davison here, and you can see that conditions are great. No rain on the roads right now, and visibility is good. However, pack that umbrella because later today, it's going to be a rainy one. Back to you. Good advice, Kim. Thank you. It is 634, and his job is to protect and serve. Yes, but now he is on the wrong side of the law. Dearborn Police Officer Justin Smith is his name pictured here, and he's facing a judge today accused of sexual assault. Nick Monticelli joins us now live with what's happening in court today and more on this entire case, Nick, which has quite a few layers to it. Yeah, it really does. In fact, quite a few layers and quite a few dates. This alleged assault actually happened in May of last year, and this has gone through the court process over and over again. But as you mentioned, he's accused of sexual assault, and today will be the day where a judge will hear both arguments. This case would be so much easier if we had a clearer view of what actually happened in this car last year. The victim claims the Dearborn Corporal sexually assaulted her. The Corporal says he merely touched her shoulder. And today a judge will hear those arguments again. This happened in May of 2016. This woman was pulled over for a traffic stop and you can see the officer does reach into the car. But he says, again, he just touched her shoulder. In court, the victim disagrees, saying she never saw it coming. Um, it was an awkward silence, and he just turned in to the car, reached in, touched my boob, and then went on about his business. There is, of course, though, the other side of the story. Corporal Smith says he and the victim were friends. In fact, he says they maintained a friendship after this incident, and she hugged him and kissed him at the restaurant she works at. He thinks there's a different motive here because he and the victim's boyfriend, who is also a police officer, don't get along. At any time after the incident, did you ever confront my client and say what he did was inappropriate? No. But just so I'm clear, we did maintain our friendship with him, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, and as I understand it from the documents, that would include hugging him when you saw him, kissing him, things like that? Yes. Uh, today's hearing is a bench trial. There is no jury. The judge will instead determine what is going to happen with this case. We are live here at the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty, Nick, thank you. It's 636 and new this morning. The man charged in that September high speed chase leading to an intense freeway takedown has entered a guilty plea on all charges, including fleeing and resisting arrest. Police say that that man you just saw, 22 year old Darren Deshaun Sherrar, they were chasing him. And it was because they suspected he was involved in a deadly shooting. And this morning, no charges have been filed in connection with that shooting. But Sherrod is due back in court for sentencing on November 3rd. And now we want to get to some stories that we're following from all across Metro Detroit. Yes, we are going to take a look at stories out of Romulus and Pontiac. But first, to an outpouring there in Waterford Township, where family and friends of Ashley Rich gather to remember the mother of three found shot to death inside of her apartment. It happened back in August. Rich was shot in the back and killed. She shared an apartment, that apartment with her boyfriend. Her family says that the couple had only been dating for a year and that the relationship had quickly turned violent. Rich's mother spoke with Local 4 with a warning to any woman living in a violent relationship. 
ladies, get out. It does not get better. I don't want anyone to end up like my baby. She's 26 years old. She had three children, all under the age of 10. They were not living with Rich when she was killed. Ian Jones, the boyfriend, is the suspected shooter and was charged, has been charged with open murder and felony firearm. He does remain behind bars. And in Pontiac now, police are investigating a hit and run crash that left one man dead on Saturday night. This was near the intersection of University Drive and Melrose Street, and police say the 29 year old victim was just crossing the street when he was hit by a full size extended cab Chevrolet pickup truck and the driver took off. The truck is possibly tan or silver in color and is reported to have a broken passenger side taillight. And at Detroit's Metro Airport, a massive drug bust. Police say that a couple flying on Friday morning on the red eye flight from Los Angeles tried to smuggle in cocaine in their luggage. Each passenger was reportedly carrying six kilograms of cocaine in their checks bags, close to a half million dollars in value. The couple is charged with possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute. The only mayoral debate between Mayor Mike Duggan and Coleman Young II is just a couple of days away. Our own Devin Skillian will moderate the debate that will be held right here in the Local 4 studio. And if you have a question that you'd like for them to answer, you can submit it on our webpage. Just go to clickondetroit.com for that. And then again, we want to remind you to watch the debate. It's Wednesday night at 8 p.m. again right here on Local 4. It is now 6.38 here on your Monday morning, and let's send things over to Jason Carr. What are you working on? Good morning. The allegations in the dozens. A new scandal erupts in Hollywood over the weekend. An Oscar-nominated writer-director now facing disturbing accusations dating back decades. What his accusers are saying. But first, out of control, a car reverses through traffic and it crashes right into a restaurant building. This whole thing was caught on camera. We'll have more on this coming up. And for a look at highlights from last week's Four Frenzy Game of the Week, plus standings for the top spirit squads in Metro Detroit, all the info at the Four Frenzy page of clickondetroit.com. We're back in a moment. Four Frenzy. Welcome back everyone. It is 642 and nine people were hurt, including four children, when an SUV smashes right through the front of Toluca's Mexican restaurant. This is in Waukegan, Illinois. It's a Chicago suburb. And as you can see here, the driver puts the vehicle in reverse, cuts through traffic, untouched, and then plows right into the front of the restaurant. One family is said to have been eating inside when that incident occurred. The owner's daughter describes the scary scene. Everybody crying, the little kids with blood. We were trying to calm them down, helping them out. Well, that elderly driver of that SUV was cited for reckless driving. And an alleged plot to blow up the Dolphin Mall in Miami has been foiled by federal agents. This was done during an undercover operation last Friday. Officials saying that they arrested Vincente Solano, and it's believed uh, that he had been acting alone in this plot. While Solano is said to have made pro-ISIS videos, he's not believed to have any direct connection to them or any other terror group. Parts of Oklahoma dealing with some extreme weather, and one driver found himself right in the middle of a tornado. Oh, oh. That's a tornado, dude. Pretty scary. The video was taken in the city of Norman, Oklahoma, just 20 miles outside of Oklahoma City, and you can see hail and other debris flying right at their car. Fortunately, no injuries were reported. And down in Louisiana, just two months after the historic flooding in southeast Louisiana, floodwaters have returned. Many of the area's homes had just been rebuilt or were in the process of rebuilding. And then the water rises again to knee level in some parts of the region there. Rescue crews were there to help people escape the knee deep water. Boy, do they need a break down there. Yeah, they certainly do. It is 644. Speaking of weather, let's turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Roo. Yeah, we have some rain of our own coming our way. Uh, we do, guys. We definitely definitely do. We want to uh, start out here with our local four storm pins and just relish a little bit on what was a gorgeous weekend. And this is a shot from, no, this is not the ambassador. It's the Blue Water Bridge up in uh, Port Huron. And this is, who is this? Kodak Chrome. 23 local four storm pinner from Dearborn Heights. Thank you so much for a beautiful picture of that uh, sunset 
Beautiful shot as I think she was celebrating an anniversary up in the Port Huron area. We're waiting on rain today, so we've sort of put an end to the prolonged summer like weather. It is not going to be super cold today, but it certainly is not going to warm up a whole lot. Temperatures 59 right now in our west zone in Ann Arbor, 61 in Pontiac, 60 in Adrian. As we hit the bus stop temperatures again, right around 60 degrees, cloudy but dry to start the day and temperatures only in the middle upper 60s through the lunch hour. After lunch, 1 to 8 p.m., those showers move in and temperatures fall off, probably down into the lower 60s. Breezes out of the south southeast will be cranking at times as well. But for now, just know that if you're driving west, you're going to run into some walls of wet weather. It is pretty heavy stuff from Kalamazoo up to Grand Rapids, Big Rapids, and into Cadillac, Traverse City. We have to wait for this area of low pressure to slowly start moving east northeast, and it's going to grab a bunch of this moisture with it and again deliver us a wetter second half of the day today. We have uh, showers that are coming in again after lunch after 1 or 2 p.m. By 8 or 9 p.m. we get a little dry slot, a little break and a couple of waves of wet weather through the overnight and I think Wednesday according to the model data the heavier showers once again set up on the west side of the state just bringing us an occasional spotty shower. 50s for temps tomorrow and still on the breezy side. 40s, that's all we get on Wednesday and a few more lake enhanced showers. Thursday and Friday do look dry, which is nice, but uh, on the weekend, both the uh, Michigan game at home and the Lions game, uh, we could be dealing with some showers, although the Lions game is Sunday night and hopefully we'll be done with any spotty showers. Just know that it will be cool, very fall like as we go through the entire week. Want to show you some video as they're preparing uh, for, I guess this is sort of the aftermath of a typhoon in Japan known as Lan. And we have information telling us that at least five people have died from this typhoon, packing intense winds, massive flooding to the region, making landfall with sustained winds of 100 miles an hour, torrential rain, still poses a potential danger with mudslides uh, warnings in place, mudslide warnings in place. And you know, this area just very, very volatile uh, when it comes to these big storms, seismic activity, that kind of stuff. So we'll keep a close eye on our friends uh, in Japan, Typhoon Lan. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brandon. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Great news, that accident over on I-94 has cleared, so we don't have any accidents to worry about. Right now, just want to let you know about some construction over on northbound I-75 between 8 Mile and I-696. Expect one lane block there between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. This will continue all week during that same time, ending on Friday at 3 o'clock. Northbound I-75 also has construction right at Square Lake. One lane block there. This also will be happening between between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. through the week ending on Friday as well. Now let's get a live check at our roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is a look at I-75 right at the Ambassador Bridge and traffic volume starting to build a little bit. Conditions looking good and remember the tunnel to Windsor is closed right now for some repairs. So if you are headed to Canada this morning or anytime today throughout the next week, you're going to want to use the Ambassador Bridge instead. Back to you. Alrighty, Kim, thank you. It is 648 now. Hollywood has another scandal on its hands. They certainly do. All the fallout from movie mogul Harvey Weinstein has tapered off a bit. An Oscar nominated director now facing similar accusations. And Jason, the accusations are just as disturbing. Indeed, we're talking about James Toback. So far, 38 women have come forward accusing the writer director of sexual harassment. Toback is the person behind the Robert Downey Jr. films, the pickup artist in Two Guys and a Girl. He got the Academy Award nomination for his script for the 1991 Warren Beatty flick, Bugsy. The allegations first surfaced in a report by the Los Angeles Times published Sunday. The women went on record with often explicit descriptions of encounters with Toback that they say go back to the 1980s. Some of the women worked for and with Toback, while others he met in public and claimed they were lured with promises of becoming a celebrity. Three accusers who spoke to NBC Nightly News last night saying Toback harassed them in New York years ago. Listen. He came over to me when I was sitting in a chair and he started rubbing his groin against me. 
I basically called him out. I'm like, what do you think that I'm stupid? I was born yesterday. Like, this is so casting couch. He also rubbed up against my knee and said that he needed to stare into my eyes. Now, none of uh, Toback's accusers that spoke with the L.A. Times reported their encounters to police. The Times reached out to Toback, who denied the allegations and told the publication he had not met any of the women. Or if he had, it was, well, quote, for five minutes, and I have no recollection. Back to you. I hope we can get to the bottom of this. You know what I mean? Well, I think we're just scratching the surface, really, on a problem sad. that's been prevalent for a long time. It's really disturbing. It is 6.50, and we are going to get to stories to watch for right after the break, so don't go away. Sky for Welcome back, everybody. It's 6.53. This morning, a Dearborn police officer is getting ready for his criminal trial after allegedly groping a woman during a traffic stop. Officer Justin Smith is charged with second-degree criminal sexual conduct. The trial is scheduled to start at 9 a.m. A lawsuit filed by the city of Flint should delay the decision over the water source. A federal judge ruled that the council could make a decision by today, but the suit claims the city would be forced under duress to decide on a long term contract. And Bo Bergdahl, who last week pleaded guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy, will be sentenced today. He walked away from his post in Afghanistan back in 2009 and was captured by the Taliban, spending nearly five years captive until a U.S. prisoner exchange in 2014. Jury deliberations are set to begin in the case of a Massachusetts pharmacist charged with murder in the 2012 meningitis outbreak that killed 76 people. Glenn Chin is accused of failing to sterilize drugs and instructing staff to use expired ingredients. Now let's send things over to Jason in the newsroom for a look at what's coming up on ClickOnDetroit.com. Good morning, attention Meyer shoppers. The grocery chain is recalling packaged products because of listeria concerns. We've got everything you need to know on our consumer page at ClickOnDetroit.com. Plus, winter is coming, whether you like it or not, on the Help Me Hank page. Important info on what you should do to your car before the white stuff starts to fall and we start slipping and sliding through the slush. Also, tasty treats and scary events around Metro Detroit. Be sure to check out our Halloween page where we have a list of events. Plus, join me back here live 915-ish on Facebook and also live streaming on Click On. Back to you. All right, Jason, thanks very much. And a quick look at your forecast. Expecting rain, grab the umbrellas as you head out and a jacket, but it's dry to start. 63 and cloudy outside right now. Heading west, heading into trouble, but it takes several hours before this wet weather comes into play here. Should hit 68 degrees around lunchtime, and then by 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, the rain starts coming down, the winds start kicking up. It's going to be a soaker of an afternoon, early evening, more spotty showers, and colder Tuesday, Wednesday. All right, thank you, Brandon. Well, we're looking pretty good out on the roads right now. No accidents to report at this time, but we do want to look at your commute over on I-275. This is right at M14, getting busy out, out, out there, but we are not dealing with rain this morning, so that's good news. Yes, it is. Today's talker of the morning, an unsent letter from a passenger on board the Titanic sets an auction record with a price tag almost impossible to believe. <laughs> this show, like, I, I can't. The note sold at auction on Sunday for, get this, $166,000. The letter was written by Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I knew it. One day before the Titanic hit an iceberg and sank. Oh, well, the letter is now the highest price item sold from the wreckage of the Titanic. The buyer chose to remain anonymous. Wow. You know well, the letter was it. written <laughs> by a passenger who passed away, but his wife survived. Unreal. Yeah. Wow. 166,000. So that was, that was uh, Kate. Wait, Ooh. not Kate. Rose. No. <laughs> That's her real name. <laughs> yeah. Man, can you believe it's been like 20 years since that movie came oh, out? Oh, I loved that movie. Still when it, one I of my still favorites. love that movie. I've seen it so many times. <laughs> and every time it comes on TV, you just pause and you watch it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Something about it, my heart can't go on. <laughs> Never let go. Never let go, Brandon. See you Have later, a great everybody. Day, everybody. <laughs>